Hey guys, it's me again, Barry with Barry's A-Track and Classic Car Radio up here. And I'm going to turn this overhead light off here so we can talk about the uh, uh, an interesting tape format that was kind of like between the 4-Track and the A-Track. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the uh, the play tape format. Now this was, um, first of all I'll show you the difference between the size of the tape. So this is a regular 8-Track tape uh, and this is a play tape. You can see it's quite a bit smaller, and the play tape, as you can see, operate on the same basic principle as the A-Track. It's a continuous loop, uh, continuous loop tape that pulls tape from the center of the hub, uh, runs it across the heads, and then a roller drives it back into the cartridge uh, to where it's uh, collected on the outer uh, on the outer edge of the hub. Uh, same as an A-Track. Uh, now the uh, the play tape format was. Um, I did a little research. Uh, now, I'm a technician, and my job is to fix what comes in. That's my job, and it's also my primary concern. See if we can get some lighting going on here. And um, so uh, there, there just isn't time for me to be an expert on who made what, who came out with what, what years did it happen, uh, things like that. I, I do get a lot of questions from folks who understandably think that I know a lot about um the collector end of it and the historical end of it when in fact I'm really really just a technician and my task and my desire is to further uh, my the service that I can provide uh, which means a lot of research and a lot of experimentation in some cases so there just isn't time for me to be a, his, uh, a historian about the various tape formats but um, so I did uh, I knew that the play tape format was a continuous loop format, meaning that I couldn't be blamed for tapes getting eaten because all that's in a continuous loop uh, tape format transport is a turning steel post. Uh, everything that can cause tapes to be eaten is a part of the tape cartridge itself. So um, that's why I decided to go ahead and take in the, uh, the the play tape job. I'm not sure whether I'll regret it, but. Um, uh, Right now we're just kind of talking about it. this is kind of part one of this uh, of this of this endeavor, and this is the uh, now we're going to look at the differences in the tape transports, the differences in size. Now here's a, a standard. Eight, let's get rid of this lighting again, and might even go to a different camera for this. Here's a an eight track transport, a typical El Cheapo, you know, aftermarket type eight track transport, and here is a play trap a play tape transport. As you can see, it's uh, you know quite a bit smaller. So the uh, the the play tape, from what I've read, the play tape format was designed uh, to try to uh, win market share from the four track format. Uh, at the time, uh, it was a, a, a very new idea to have a, a a tape format that you could play in cars, and so. Um, it was the four track uh, was the, was the first format that became accepted as you know for for cars basically it, it was a, a portable cartridge thing you didn't have to worry about threading tape or you know setting a phonograph needle down on a record you just plugged in a cartridge and that was and that was it and so the four track uh, that would be uh, months was the guy who basically invented the four track and um, that was the first tape format that was offered in cars and at the time the the equipment required to play four tracks was was pretty big and heavy uh generally consumed a lot of current so it wasn't really uh, a viable format to put into a portable carry around thing that you could carry to the beach you know you'd, you'd probably have to carry a big old you know storage battery around with you to be able to run that thing for more than an hour or so and so the um from what I've read, again, I'm, I'm no expert on this, but from what I've read, the play tape format was an attempt to um, to be the next thing, the, the next thing after the four track. Basically, um, it eventually and pretty quickly lost to the eight track format. But at any at any rate, the play tape format did exist for a few years, and it actually became very popular. There were about th somewhere between three and four thousand. Um, big time artists who you know released their music in the play tape format um, now because of licensing costs uh, Columbia never did put any music in the play tape format so I'm sure that hurt its popularity potential uh, and I believe it was there was another uh, major record company that also did not uh, put out titles in the play tape format so that kind of leads me to okay why you know wasn't the play tape uh, a format that that caught on well um, 
the main reason is the because of the size of the cartridges you could only get a maximum of 24 minutes onto a onto a play tape cartridge and play tape cartridges were typically not stereo uh they only offered you know 24 minutes at a, at at the speed of cassette runs which is 1 and 7 eighths inches per second it's pretty slow speed um and at the time the cassette format you know was not accepted as a good sounding format at the time it was more of a dictation type thing where uh, it was useful for that but a lot, most people didn't really look at cassettes for music reproduction until years later when they perfected the the sound quality and all that kind of stuff uh, at that time uh, the continuous f loop format ran at twice the speed so it therefore sounded a little bit better than the cassette format did at that time so the play tape was kind of like an attempt to sneak in there and uh, and replace the four track as a portable medium because a, a play tape machine you know use a tiny tapes which meant you could use a tiny uh, a tiny tape transport operated by a tiny motor and you could throw six C cells into a play tape you know portable unit take it to the beach and probably have music for two three hours um, but now so that that's a cool thing about that uh, but now the um, the one of the main reasons besides the besides the limited amount of playing time uh it was also quality issues that that just allowed the a track to to win out over the play tape format as a successor to the four track um and so we'll get into that now um i didn't know anything about the play tape tape format when this customer contacted me uh, except that it was a continuous loop format meaning that okay if i fix if I can fix the the transport, you know, the tape transport, um, you know, I'll never get any nuisance calls for customers saying, "Hey, it just ate my tape." Well, no, it was you had a bad tape. All that's inside your machine is a turning steel post that doesn't eat tapes. Uh, everything that eats tapes is part of the cartridge in these continuous loop formats. Um, so now we'll move on to the uh, to the quality issues, and. Uh, I all I did on to find out about the play tape format was I looked it up on Wikipedia, I uh, read a couple articles that a couple of folks put out, um, and learned just basically enough to discuss it somewhat intelligently. So we'll move on to the view of this transport here, uh, get a closer view. And now um, there now there were a couple neat things about the play tape format that could have stood to move over into the eight track format. Uh, for one thing, the play tape was held in on both sides you see these little bitty there's a little little notch right there and the little notch right there and you'd slide that tape in and you'd have these little springs that would that would hold it in place on both sides you know keeping it in proper alignment whereas in the a-track format it, the tapes only held in on one side meaning that it's the tape can move around like this that affects the way it sounds and can even prevent from playing when it's uh, when it's not in a you know an optimum position so there is one advantage that the play tape format had over the eight track format and then there was another one one really cool idea that that the eight track format definitely should have should have adopted is the spring loaded rollers that you find on play tapes uh, this roller is on a spring you can see you can press that roller in a good easily three sixteenths possibly a quarter of an inch uh, so that uh, that helps to compensate for different amounts of pressure that that uh, you know different machines hold the tapes in by some of them hold tapes in really tight some of them don't um, so this little spring loaded roller was a really neat thing uh, this would have probably completely eliminated the the matchbook syndrome with the a-track for it because this kept the uh, you know this kept the tape you were able to push the tape really tightly in but the amount of pressure on the cap stand and roller was regulated by the the built-in spring so that was a neat thing and another nice thing about the spring action here is when the tape's not in the player the tape is locked in place uh, it's, it's 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 pretty much locked in place i don't think it locks the hub in place that would have been too much mechanicals uh for a little bitty cartridge like this but at least it keeps the tape from uh, are unraveling too much when the when the tapes are stored for extended periods of time because they, when tapes are stored for long periods of time uh, you know they tend to unravel and then they get too much slack and that's when they jam and you get that accordion effect and all that so uh, there was two things about this design that were actually potentially superior to the a track format but all that good stuff is canceled out by again 
uh, as I was reading Wikipedia, quality issues uh, is is what is one of the major things that made the format fail. And to, to that end, this is the chassis for. Uh, probably the most rugged built play tape machine there was because your more ruggedly built machines go into cars because cars obviously have a rougher environment they're out in the elements and so they have to perform when they're hot cold moist dry um, so car units tend to be made uh, much more solidly than home units and uh, only two cars ever used uh, the play tape format they were both Volkswagens uh, well, there's more than one type. There was actually six different, at least eight different Volkswagen cars that that had that offered a play tape as standard equipment, um, and and those are the only cars they went into. So I'll assume that uh, besides these, you probably just had your your home units. Now about the uh, the mono, I I, ex I mentioned the mono aspect of the play tape format. Um, it was capable of stereo. It's a two-track. Uh, it's a two-track, um, eighth-inch wide tape. So it was capable of. Uh, in, instead of having stereo, though, you would have program one and program two. That way, you could get more music onto a tape. And naturally, stereo takes up twice as much tape as mono because you need two tracks for stereo. So, uh, you generally had. Uh, now the the. The play tape units that I've seen on YouTube had one head, which I will presume to be a stereo head, because you could select either uh, program one or program two. Now, some portable play tape units did also have a stereo position, uh, and the one that I saw uh, had a single head, so obviously that had to be a stereo head if it could re reproduce uh, both track one and track two, and you would just select which head output you were listening to at that time. Well, you, you can see this unit's a little bit different. This has two heads. On an 8-track cartridge, this is normally where your automatic track change sensor goes and it peeks through and the tape crosses over it with that metallic sp splice and triggers a track change. Uh, this actually has a head in place of that. <coughs> so even if they, to my knowledge, they never did put out stereo play tapes, although it was it was possible, but you can see right here that a stereo play tape would not play properly on this because the the track two channel would be occurring about a second after the track one channel, so it would be a, a it would be a garbled mess. It would be the, the left channel would be uh, the right channel would be uh, one second ahead of the left channel, so you wouldn't be able to listen to it that way. So this, and accordingly enough, this unit, uh, this car unit, this Volkswagen car unit only has two positions, you know, one and two, one, program one and program two. It does not offer a stereo position, obviously, because a stereo tape would not play right in this. And it's kind of strange. I find it really weird that they would use two mono heads instead of one stereo head. It, it's just kind of strange. Um, and this does look like a full track mono head. Let me just take a closer look here and wipe off some crud. Yeah, that's a that's a single head, and I don't know if you can see inside or not, but you can see how the heads are offset. Uh, the left head picks up the bottom half of the tape, and the head on the right naturally uh, picks up the upper half of the tape. So uh, that's as a tape goes across those heads, um, you can select either the the bottom channel or the top channel, or in this you know it would actually be channel one and channel two, program one or program two. So Okay, so that's uh, that covers another one of the of the, the unique characteristics of some of these play tape units. Now um, we're going to get into uh, the quality issue, and unfortunately, it's one that renders the unit pretty much unusable without some creativity on the on the owner's part. But so here is, as I mentioned, this is probably one of the most rugged uh, uh, ch chassis for the uh, play tape format because it went into a car it's in pretty thick plastic now the, the, the service manual for this as you can see i've got the service manual for the probably can't read it very well but there we go am radio tape player volkswagen sapphire um that is the service manual uh, this chassis this entire chassis not minus the heads but uh, this entire chassis with that bearing pressed in was only 20 cents more than the belt for this unit so that gives you an idea of what kind of 
um, quality, you know, into these units. Needless to say, you know, plastic can warp with temperature. Um, it can deform with age. But the most, uh, the, the biggest problem with plastic is that it gets, it becomes brittle with age. Now, this, these are the springs that hold the cartridge in. I mentioned earlier that we've got this uh, cartridge that has the slots. And as you slide this cartridge in, that spring is supposed to snap into those little slots. And there's one on that side, and there's supposed to be one on this side. Uh, and the owner gave me this in a plastic bag, and he, he didn't know what it was, and I didn't either. Uh, but this is actually the right-hand spring that's supposed to go there and clamp against this tape. Um, now, <laughs> using plastic as a spring, uh, needless to say, that just it can't work for any any length of time. Uh, this one's already broken off, and and these things only so, were only they only moved about not even an eighth of an inch as you press this cartridge in. These things would only move about maybe maybe a sixteenth of an inch, and even with that little bit of movement, uh, this one has already snapped off. And this one you probably can't see it from this view, but this one as you begin to press on it, you can see that there's a crack right there and it widens as you press it so needless to say these these are useless um, there there's not really a way to repair this um, epoxy is just not going to work in this instance uh, to use enough epoxy to cover is enough of that area to be um, effective would probably not allow the tape to come to come through it just couldn't spread enough so um, what I'm going to have to do to this thing is devise some kind of a deal that locks this tape in without scraping on it. Uh, now here's another, we are talking about the quality of the play tape format. Uh, this is our, this is what's supposed to be holding the tape in. It's basically a rounded piece of plastic. They can't make it very sharp because then that would put too much wear on it as the tape is slid in and this thing engages. Now you can see that it's not a tight engagement at all. Look how much, see how much daylight you can see between the, that's just not it's just not holding that tape in very tightly and it's because over the years needless to say you, you, you scrape plastic against each other like this and it's going to wear and so now the corner of this thing is pretty well rounded and um, so we've got a kind of a mess on our hands here and you know rather than rather than go in and, and try to come up with some magical epoxy spring solution that might work fine on the bench but then after a couple of weeks in the car it's just going to break down um i uh, i only feel confident coming up with some kind of a of a of a steel thing uh get rid of this all together and replace these with steel you know l-shaped steel levers that engage when the tape's in but that release when you want to pull the tape out rather than release because you're pulling the tape out because anything like that's going to put wear uh, it, it's going to wear out. Anything that puts, you know, um, so what I want to be able to do is not even have these in place until the tape's in, and then somehow these two little L-shaped pieces of steel clamp, you know, clamp onto these sides and hold the tape in and won't let you to pull the tape out until you're ready to, uh, you know, maybe a solenoid that engages when you put a tape in that, uh, clamps down on these things and then you know when you want to pull the tape out there's something that you have to do to to release the solenoid and you know release the things but to me that's the only way you know to make this a reliable mechanism um and again i'm talking about the play tape format uh and the quality issues that were reported uh with them and so yeah that, that's definitely bearing out because you just can't expect plastic being used as springs to last what are these this is a 1968 unit so we're talking about you know 40 50 years here or more of plastic you know being you know f frozen in the winter and hot in the summertime over a f period of 50 cycles and um this this is just not something that could possibly last and even if i were able to find a brand new transport uh most likely this plastic is already so brittle that these that these springs just would not work properly they'd probably break pretty quick so um this has been part one of the interesting challenging and almost um comical uh play tape format and uh my attempts to um 
to say, oh, sure, man, I can fix it, and then actually be able to fix it. <laughs> so, um, And one thing I don't like to do is disappoint a customer, so I'm just going to have to do whatever it takes to get this thing working in that in that player. And there's not a lot of space to work in either. Here's the... Um, Here's a here's a chassis that goes in, and here's the there's a transport, and uh, this thing can just barely be slid all the way up to the front of the unit. So when the units or when the transport's in, then we're taking up about that much space, and then the motor goes here. So there's that, and then whatever's left is the space that I've got to install uh, the FMR module, the Bluetooth USB module. Uh, a motor speed control board if needed and my special tape head preamp so there's quite a bit of junk that's going to be packed in here once I get this uh, once I get this transport in place and operating then I'm going to be building a bunch of stuff in on top of it so we want to make darn sure that this is going to be a, a reliable mechanism and so uh, yeah this one's going to be uh, it's going to be kind of a labor of love and it's going to be uh, somewhat frustrating because I had to figure out how to put uh, a bunch of mechanical stuff in here where a bunch of boards need to go so uh, this will be an interesting challenge but at any rate um, just wanted to introduce you guys to the play tape format oh and another quality issue with this one too is and it even it even has it this way in the service manual um, if you take a close look at this cap and you'll see that it's only the very top eighth of an inch that was again that was held against the roller you can see the tape where as you know as it, as it rubbed past this cap stand um, I really don't like clearances to be that tight. I'd like this thing to overhang the roller a little bit so that we know it's putting even pressure on all parts of the roller. Uh, with the tape material only contacting the very top eighth of, the inch, eighth inch of this thing, I'm pretty concerned that this is going to be putting an indentation in the tape's roller because it's not covering the entire roller it's only covering the part of the roller that the tape goes across there's still a little bit of roller left over after that and so repeated playing of this tape would likely uh, end up wearing a ridge into this roller and then after that it won't play properly in a good machine because um, in that machine it'll be pushing on the part of the roller that didn't get worn and it won't be touching the tape material so um, this has been an interesting format and if, in case you're wondering how to take apart these things I don't know um, but I, I can say that it feels pretty loose. This one feels pretty loose on all corners, and it's kind of it's got like a little welded deal right in the center there. So possibly drill that out, and you can probably take the whole cartridge apart. Um, I don't get into repairing even eight track tapes except for my own use. So I'm definitely not going to pry open a, a customer's play tape that uh, might be irreplaceable. So. Um, We've covered uh, some of the various uh, differences and quality issues with the play tape format. This is more or less part one of uh, Barry becoming familiar with the four hat. The, the four hat. The, the, they were a group in the 70s, four hat. I just want to make love to you. Um, so um, so here we go. I've got two heads. I don't know what condition they're in. Uh, the wires that, that were connected to them were so stiff. I mean, here I'm hanging this, this thing by the wire, and the wire is... You know, still keeping its original shape. So this is some pretty stiff wire. All that has to go. I can't let that leave my shop like that. And then we had to determine whether the heads are still good. You know, how to wire it up, how to get all this stuff into this chassis with some extra mechanical stuff that I have to design around it. So uh, this will be a challenge. Uh, so uh, stay tuned for part two. I have no idea when that will be, but. Uh, one thing I don't want to do is disappoint this customer by saying, you know what, this thing just can't be fixed. Um, i I got to figure out how to get it going for him and re reliably. So um, I'm Barry with Barry's A-Track and Classic Car Radio Pair. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this has been an interesting little uh, excursion into the play tape format. Uh, not very informative, but there's uh, you can find uh, more information on the Internet about the play tape format. Pretty interesting stuff. Um, so... There we are. Thanks for watching and listening. We'll see you next time.